Hello and very warm welcome dear most audience and my students and colleagues to the Dr. Zia Ahmed YouTube channel uh, set up for the academic purposes. Today I'm going to discuss on section 20 of the song of myself by Walt Whitman, the American poet. I have already recorded videos on different sections and uh, if you want to see the background of today's video, you can go for these videos as well. So let's have a start. The style of this uh, this section is also with respect to the questions. He puts different questions as he had put in the last video as well. Now these questions are really very important because they set the tone and try to make the reader understand what is going to be talked about. Let us consider some of the questions. For example, the poet says, Who goes there? Hankering, cross, mystical, nude. How's it? I extract the strength from the beef I eat. There are three things here in, the, in this part of the poem. Number one is the narrator himself. Number two is the beef definitely coming from some animal. And thirdly is the grass. So these three things interconnect with each other. According to the poet that he is there present and is having a body, having a mind and is going about here and there. And he puts a question that what kind of person is going to be in the same way as in section six he had put a question who he is. And he, and he relates himself, his body, to the beef which he eats and the beef comes definitely from the cow which eats the grass. So in that way, he is related to the grass but he's putting a question that he does not know and he wants to know, wants to explore. So through, through these questions, the narrator of the poem wants to study how he has become such a personality, such a person, such a body, such a mind, how he has become so definitely one of the idea is that he has eaten the beef which was coming from the cow who had eaten the grass. So that way the circle goes around these three things and he himself while putting these questions answers this question as well. Let us see what further details the poet provides. What's a man anyhow? What am I? What are you? All I mark as my own, you shall offset it with your own. Else it were time lost listening to me. The poet says that if I look at myself and ask a question who I am, and then I look at to you, look at you and again ask the question who you are, then actually this question becomes meaningless because both of us are the same. That I can be you and you can be me also. He says, wherever we are standing, we are the part of this whole nature, part of all this thing. Uh, we can replace each other as well. For example, if I am here, you can come closer to me and you can become me and I can become you. So in this way, the matter of listening, matter of seeing is only present. Otherwise, it is only one thing. So not only the human beings are one, but also they are the part of nature. They are the part of animal kingdom. And therefore, they all become one. All are sustained by one another. All are prospered by one another. So that is why the poet says that who you are, who I am, we are the same. And we are very much connected to the part of nature. The poet further says, I do not snivel, that snivel the world over, that mounts are vacuums in the ground but wallow and filth, whimpering and truckling forward with powders for invalids, can formity goes to the fourth removed, I wear my hat as I please indoor I or, or outdoor. Well, these lines again have a same philosophy but in a very different important type of wording the philosophy has been repeated for example the poet says that he doesn't want to weep and doesn't want to cry at all doesn't want to make a face at all doesn't want to raise little voices in order to show his dissatisfaction he says that whatever he will do whatever uh, pleasantry or whatever unpleasantry he will be feel ultimately he is the one who is just like the mud just like the filth which comes out of the earth and which the animals enjoy which the plants enjoy in our to grow up and he himself is the part of that he says that he has got no right in order to show his dissatisfaction with that he says he is all the time very much attached very much removed from the same place from where he has come so in that way the poet again and again goes to say that it is his will that he should feel good or he should feel bad but he says that he can only feel one thing that he is the part of everything like that from where he is coming part of the earth part of the you know mud part of the filth everything is attached with him he says that it is his own will whether he should wear the hat when he is inside or when he is outside. 
that goes to reflect that on the one hand the poet is trying to show his individuality that he does not care for the people what they are saying he cares only for the thing which he belongs to and so if he likes he can wear the hat and the outside he can wear the hat inside the door as well it is all, all up to his will the same thing he attaches with the sniveling attaches with the feeling whimpering attaches with the sadness also he says if it is possible for him if he likes to do so he will feel that otherwise he will not do that so the philosophy of of life and that of death is that of the pleasantry not that of feeling sad and that is why he says that he wants to celebrate uh, his being in this world in such a way that a thankfulness is conveyed to the nature as he is the part of that one as well the poet further says why should i pray why should i venerate and be ceremonious having pried through the strata and allies to a uh, hair concerned with doctors and calculated clothes i find no sweeter fat than sticks to on my bones so poet says that uh, there is no need to go for specially a different rites type of worship and trying to say that he is worshiping something there is no need of that because he himself is the part of that he respects and honors that part also he says that he has seen everything he has looked at the hair he has looked at different parts of the world he has consulted with the doctors he has become to the calculation that whatever is attached to him is the best part of nature for example the meat which is attached or the flesh which is attached to his bones is the best one he says therefore he is the best product of nature and that is why he should be thankful automatically because he is the expression of all the force of nature expression of all the creativity of nature and in a way is the best product of all that that is why he says that he is happy he is not he is not reeling at all to feel sad and feel bad as well the poet further continues to say in the same tone uh, for example he says in all people i see myself none more and not one a barely corn less and the good or bad i say of myself i say of them i know i am solid and sound to me the converging objects of universe perpetually flow all are written to me and i must get what the writing means so again and again the same philosophy is being repeated the poet says that he wants to tell the people that he is not different from them everybody is like him and he is like everybody he says that is not different from them he says if he is good at one place or bad at one place similarly others can also be the same and as the others can be good and bad in the same way he can be there he says uh, he is the best product because his body is solid he is sound and he is the part of nature part of universe constantly all the things and powers of universe have come converged into him and he says that he is writing poetry he is the written material in the same way as the poet writes the poem and the poet becomes the poem and the poem can be understood with reference to the poet or the poem is itself a poet in the same way he says that his creation of his body is the is the manifestation of nature that he is the one best product of nature so in that way he claims a special place for him that he is the one who is the best product of nature and that everybody is he says what he believes about himself he believes about everybody else he says i know i am deathless i know this orbit of mine cannot be swept by a carpenter's compass i know i shall not pass like a child's curl q uh, cut with a burnt stick at night and the philosophy of the uh, the section 6 is being repeated that he will not die at all he will become the part of nature he says that whatever the myers people have carpenter's compass for example with that if you try to consider me i am not the one who will become destroyed with the help of that when death will come i will destroy he says no it's not the case at all he will not be destroyed he is not like child's garlic you uh, which can be cut in any way he says he is the one who is the part of that so therefore he is deathless he cannot be defeated cannot be finished he says he is I know I am August. This is the best one, August one, very beautiful one. I do not trouble my spirit to vindicate itself or be understood. I see that the elementary laws never apologize. I reckon I behave no prouder than the level I plant my house. by after all so poet continues uh, to to praise himself to admire himself in his body by saying that he is the one who's the best product of all that all elements combine in him and therefore is not going to become sad at all because his body is going to be the august one again he says i exist as i am that's not enough if no other in the world be aware i said content and all and if each and all be aware i said content so the contentment of the poet is reflected in these lines that he says whatever the condition he is present whatever the condition his body is present he is very much happy with that he is contented with that he says that everybody has to be content in the same way as he is he says and tells the people that everybody should be aware that he is sitting and he is content also
Last part of the poem says, One word is aware and by far the largest to me and that is myself. And whether I come to my own today or in 10,000 or 10 million years, I can cheerfully take it now or with equal cheerfulness I can wait. So the matter of self has come once again, the song of myself is there. He says that whatever the condition he is present, he says that he, it is his self. It is the thing which he is. He says, even if he may pass one day, two days, ten days or thousand and ten million days, he will be there all the time. He says he will be waiting for himself again and again after everything. If, for example, he disappears in one circle of life, maybe appearing once again, the same true beautiful self will be present there. And that is why he can wait for himself. He can grow, he can become bigger, possibly he can become greater possibly can become the best manifestation of nature he says that he will be continuously thankful and contented because he's going to become like that my foothold is in tenant and amortized in granite i laugh at what you call dissolution and i know the amplitude of time he says time is like a round you know structure and there the time continues to move and therefore if one is standing at the lower bottom can go to the upper bottom as well and again can come back. So dissolution according to him is not the end of life. He says for example if you think about me I can be found on a granite stone because I, my picture has been painted there and because of that I have become immortalized and I have been shown there. In the same way he says that every human being who is born will be immortalized in one way or the other. His body shape, his life may not remain the same but he will be there in one way or the other present. So one soul which is born is never dead. Physically we we die but spiritually we don't die so in that way the poet claims the spiritual entity which according to him is not going to die in any way that will become immortalized his beauty his structure his creation god's creation itself will become immortalized as well so that is the poem of today's section 20 a little bit confusing because philosophy is very difficult with the poet is preaching but still one can make more efforts by going deeper into the meanings of the words and reading the philosophy of Whitman and then trying to find out the what is what is themes are there inside this poem and relating it with other sections as well actually if we give the gap for example I last time made a video on section 6 and now it is on 20 the gap makes it little difficult so the students who want to go for all may be reading all the gaps so thank you for watching it hopefully seeing you in some next next video and uh, please uh, hit the subscribe button and the like button and give your comments also if you like it if you understand anything out of this book thank you for watching bye bye